Hello, brothers and sisters. How you doing? It's uh, August the 11th. And uh, again, I'd like to start off by thanking everybody for their prayers. Uh, last night was a night free of any kind of attack. Um, so, so thank you guys all very, very much. I finally got a, a little bit of rest last night. And, uh, and because of that, I have a, a dream and a couple flash dreams. And I actually have a, a message from the Lord. Um, and it's very, very short. And direct and to the point And I will give it to you now Before I get to the dreams All I heard, all I heard was A wrath Will be seen from heaven Let me repeat that one more time I heard A wrath Will be seen from heaven So when I heard that I started immediately thinking guys That uh If, there, if, if I'm being told to look up that a wrath is coming from the heavens and I, I'm I'm guessing that we are very close to either uh, an asteroid or a nuclear attack hitting um, I don't I felt really uh, pushed to get this video out today to actually share that with you so that to me tells me that it's sooner than than we might think I didn't want to wait and then all of a sudden something happened and I didn't get this out to you guys so I'm glad I was able to do that in the same night I also was uh, having a lot of water dreams flash dreams a lot of dreams of people dying in the water which makes me think of tsunamis and stuff like that I also saw a rig and I was looking out over the water and I was like in the ocean and a lot of people were jumping off the rig I jumped off into the water and then a uh, ark a boat comes and a few of us get on the ark and the ark takes off now guys this ark is what the gospel of Jesus Christ offers you if you repent of your sins and do the things you're supposed to do Yes, including getting baptized, repenting of your sins, living a holy life, and taking Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are on this ark. And, and other, others who did not get on this ark, they died in the water. They perished. And when they perish, how do you think they feel in that next life when they perish and they stand before the Lord and they didn't get on that ark? Isn't this there? That's why the scriptures talk about one hiding under a rock. There's nothing worse than your shame before the Lord. You don't want that, believe me. And then I, um, then I, this is a little flash I'm gonna share with you guys. This one was really strange. I still don't know what it means, uh, but I'll give it to you guys. And uh, I saw a group of people, and I wasn't told if they were good or bad, but they were actually rewriting history. They were rewriting the history books, and I, 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 all of a sudden, I wanted to say, "Oh, well, they must be bad." Like, but at the same time, I'm like, "No, don't say that. Just only, only say what the Lord gives you, because who knows? Our history is wrong. A lot of our history is wrong. No, not our biblical stuff, but I mean, a lot of the stuff that the, the, we, we have in our scientific uh, community is wrong. And so, they might have been good rewriting our true history. So, I'm not going to say it was if it was good or bad. I, I don't know. But then something very strange happens. I see um, some kind of being uh, I'm not sure it didn't have wings or anything like that so I don't know if it was a bad angel good angel I didn't know I don't know what it was a spirit some kind of spirit talking and they had this group of people that were asking it, it questions and next to it they had this kind of stone monument thing it was kind of like long stones like stacked upon each other like in a um, like little like coffee table sized you know going up on top of each other and as they all, I asked a question, they asked her the question, but it was uh, they were doing it to entrap this thing. As they asked her the question, the very top stone started to like vibrate and like give off a light, and then it like like froze or something, and just the top rock. And then they entrapped this spirit or this whatever it was. I don't know. This was a very strange dream. It has me wondering what in the heck this might mean. But I thought I'd share it with you guys and give it to you. And I also had a, uh, a really cool dream, guys. And this dream starts off at a house. It starts off with some of the same problems that I have on, on this earth, right, uh, you know, my whole life growing up. You know, friends and family breaking my things, and it was kind of weird, you know. And then I'm watching out of my uh, my younger brother, who is who's mentally disabled, uh, someone attacks him and tries to, uh, they're fighting, and uh but my, my brother, growing up, he was mentally ill, so after they, people would pick on him, he would like just let him sometimes, and he started to let the guy attack him, so I went in, in, to his defense and all that. And then, uh, this is where it starts, it's pretty soon as I start getting really, really, I'm start getting really aware of what's going on. This At this point, it's kind of still like a dream, but then it gets to like, 
uh, I think I think I start getting like angelic visitation in this dream and I'll explain this to you so we start driving to this this family reunion it's like a big reunion of all kind of family members it reminds me of guys of heaven pretty sure it's what it was guys it was when we we get raptured or get taken up or however you want to use whatever word you want to use it was a big reunion where like meeting ancestors i didn't even know i had i was meeting family i didn't even know i had close relatives i was meeting angels that were like brothers and cousins to me i didn't even know i had that that's how it, that's how it was and so there's also a sick relative there it was a lady and she was sickly i don't know which, who she stood for but this party was also for her so as we get into this house, it's made differently. It's kind of like a house, but it contained no no walls, and they had they had like woods in this house. It was like a it looked just like a house. You could almost see the veil of uh, walls, but you couldn't. But it was like really big, and there's like woods and forest, and it's like really strange house slash land wood. Kind of like that one dream I had where you know you, where I felt like Joshua on top of the mountain, and I could see the giant coming from the bottom and all that. It kind of was a house, kind of like that. Well, anyway, in this uh, this dream, I'm standing, I'm kind of shy, you know, so I'm standing by a room door. And then two guys call me to come talk to them. And this, boom, all of a sudden, I'm understanding I'm in this dream. I'm, I'm totally aware. So either, you know, at some point, I think, like, I saw the angelic realm just took over the dream. That's how it felt to me. And as I'm sitting there, I'm sitting with these, these two guys. And they call me to the table. I feel they are, like some kind of cousins or relatives of mine but I didn't know them but actually in the dream I knew who they were I knew them they were like long lost family members but as I woke up I forgot who they were but I knew them in the dream okay but guess here's the kicker guys they were angels they weren't even humans but I knew them personally it was very exciting so they go and he one was talking more than the rest and we were really close and he asked me as he's asking me all these questions he takes my leg and I, I, I kind of like, he heals my leg. He like does something, he like touches my leg in a few places and heals it. I have no idea exactly what he was doing, but he healed my leg. So maybe that's symbolic, but he healed me. And then he does something really strange, guys. I, I don't remember exactly how he worded this question, but it kind of was like, do you have any other problems that I can heal? Or, and this is how I finally realized he was an angel. I said, uh, I don't know why I use this. I have no idea because I have a lot of health problems that I could have had healed if I would have asked the right questions. But for some reason, maybe it was just so God could show me something. I said anxiety. I have no idea why I said that. And I said anxiety. And do you know what his response was to me, guys? I, after I tell him I have anxiety, he says, what is that? Yeah, what is that? He had no idea what anxiety was. So what human doesn't know what anxiety is? This man, they were not human. They were angelic. And they had no idea, no idea what anxiety was. So this goes to show you that, that in heaven, they're not experiencing the, the depression or anxiety or all the hardship of this world. So as I'm sitting there talking to him, I noticed that there was one person not there. And this person so happened to be one of my closest friends and I almost positive he was either Michael the Archangel or Jesus Christ. I'm not sure who it was, but to me, he was my closest relative. But he wasn't there. He was too busy fighting. He was, they called it hunting, but he was, he's fighting beasts, guys. They were using terminology that I knew. And so he was there fighting beasts, so he couldn't be there. And so I was really curious to who this was, but I knew him in the dream. So I didn't tell them that I love hunting and they say, I, I know, like they knew right away. I then follow, uh, all of a sudden I go with some of them into the woods and we go and as we're walking out into the woods to go hunting, I'll use the word hunting, but in reality it's just uh, fighting the, the evil fallen angels and beasts. Uh, all of a sudden, this huge beast, it looked kind of like, as big as like a, like a TV werewolf, except it didn't look like that, it looked like a demonic werewolf mix of a creature like seven eight nine feet tall i'm not sure it runs out on us and so what i do without even thinking about it it was so awesome i took the bow from the other guy's hand next to me without even thinking about it without no fear just all this boom grab the bow whop, I pop the bow the arrow goes flying hits him right between the eyes and the head without even thinking and the, the beast is dead it's like wow that was awesome 
So the beast is dead. I then uh, start to think of uh, this family member again who wasn't there. It was a big part, like I said, and I believe, I'm, I'm not gonna say who that was, but you know, in my opinion, it was, I don't know, I kind of feel like it was Michael, to tell you the truth. He wasn't there, and it could have been that he wasn't here for that dream, particular dream. He could have been really busy right now, doing something and he just wasn't uh, able to be at this particular dream where I could talk to him which is amazing that they were even like consider that I would want to see him and then um then this lady who was also a part of this reason why we're all there she stood up and she says and she was saying something about if she wasn't there I mean if she if my, she didn't say Michael Gosman, I think that's who it is. She says if her, if he, if she used her son in this, her son as terminology, but I think she was just trying to show me the re relationship between family kind of thing. She said if he was there, that he would have been the one reading the paper she was about to read, but since he wasn't, she was going to read it. And she started to read, and she started to tell of, she said this paper was full of visions and communication from the Lord. Full of visions and dreams, and she was reading it from the Lord. And then she uh, she started to like name all the different m people's family members, jobs and roles and relationships, kind of like in heaven. She starts like kind of giving us what we're gonna do. And she goes to me. She goes to tell me what I'm gonna do. And as she does, she doesn't even have to say a word. It's like I I all I'm, I can read her thoughts. And I'm the leader of a bunch of warriors who destroy beasts. Destroy. I'm, I'm the leader of um, like some kind of. I don't know. I have no idea. I just knew I was the leader of a bunch of warriors, and that's what. Uh, so I have no idea. And I'm ex And I was kind of. Oh, I was like, oh, because I woke up right then and there. I was like, no. I was like, I wanted to hear her actually read my exact job the description you know what am I gonna be doing why am I flying around in all these dreams why am I fighting the devil in all these dreams what the heck am I doing you know so I was so excited but I actually went back to bed I'm like no so I went and laid in the bed and I like try to close my eyes to go back to sleep and I'm like oh no but uh but that's what I was trying to tell you as soon as I go open my eyes I hear as soon as like right in the middle of open my eyes the voice says a wrath will be seen from heaven so I was like, oh, okay, so it's close, Lord, so it's close. So that means that pretty soon, guys, we're going to see a wrath from heaven. So I have no idea when it'll happen, I have, uh, but I know it will happen. And it made me really feel last night, because of your prayers, because of all that you guys do, that I, I could feel pretty much like I had angelic presence from God in my room last night. And I, I, I'm thankful for, uh, for all that you do, brothers and sisters. Without without each other supporting each other, without each other being there for each other, you know, we couldn't do the things that we do now. And it makes us stronger. And I love all of you very much. And please, please repent of your sins. Without repentance, you cannot go to heaven. Jesus Christ paid the pe the price for those. Sins that we repent of. That's remember that saying. He paid the price of sin that we repent of. If you don't repent of your sins, you will have to pay the price of your own sins. And what I mean by that is that you will be in hell, having to be punished and tortured for the sin that you committed. The atonement only washes you clean with the blood of the Lamb if you repent of your sins. We put them every day, guys. Every night when you go to bed. Every day. Um, you know, but remember this, guys. And I always say this. Sin starts in your brain. It starts with your thoughts. Thoughts lead to actions. Do the small things. Turn off the bad TV. Turn off the bad radio. You know, watch your language. Respect your, your, your mother and father. It's just the small things, guys. It's the small things. Well, I hope you guys like these dreams. And um, I'm kind of excited that I received, uh, you know... Uh, this message here uh, about a wrath being seen from heaven I, I will definitely personally be looking up in in the sky for the next couple of weeks because I'm kind of curious how soon this would uh this take effect um, but I was glad I was able to share this with you share this with you guys and I tell you about this 
because I want to let you know that how soon stuff is about to take place. That way you know and have a certainty that you need to a, need a repent of your sins and come to Jesus Christ. Leave the world. Leave sin behind. Get all the gray out of your life. Get one foot out of Babylon and one foot in Christ. Get your both feet in Christ. Stand firm. Repent of your sins. Become a new creation. A new creature in Jesus Christ. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You've come in the final days. Oh, knowing God has held you in reserve for nearly 6,000 years. You have been with you. You are a marked generation. Mark generation. Mark generation. The earth at this particular time was full God of has saved for the final inning of our life. You, 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 you must be prepared to meet your oh, God. youth of the noble birth. You are part of the Lord's royal army. The army. There are things for each of you to do that no one else can do. You are preserved as well as your special world. You, 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 you. Me?